been a while since I've done a mystery box challenge video here on my channel. And if you're new to the mystery box challenge, I am so excited you're here today. We're gonna be opening up this box and I have to craft with everything that's inside. I have to thank Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She is the host of the Mystery Box Challenge, and there are so many amazing and talented DIY YouTubers that take part. She's the one that actually sent me my box, so we'll see if we're still friends after this or not, because a lot of times there's some crazy things that can be in this box. I put a box together as well for my friend Jennifer over at Little Bit of Common Crazy, and I'll make sure to put a link in the description box to a playlist you can go through person by person to see who sent who, what, and what they do with all of the things inside their box. But before we get started, if you're new here, welcome, my name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. Now, let's get brave together and open this box. So let me explain something too. Along with a box of mystery items, we also get two challenge items, which I see right here. I'm gonna save these for last. These could be doozies. Another twist to this box is we also have to do at least one project without any kind of adhesive. So she has laid it out pretty thick for us. Before we get started though, she also, aw, is so sweet. So it looks like there's a note and some caramel apple filled Werther's Originals. Have you guys tried these before? These are so good. So you see these at Dollar Tree, highly recommend. This is such a cute card. It says, hello, darling. And then on the inside she writes, hey, Shannon, I'm so glad to have you do another round of the mystery box. Since you are the queen of hack videos, I decided to theme your box a little. I'm sure you can figure out the hack, but don't worry, I threw in a few random things to give you a little challenge. Can't wait to see what you make. Much love, Courtney. All right, so let's save those challenge items and see what's in the box. So I have to say right off the bat, I love this because it's rainbow. So I'm sure she saw that and probably thought of me, wind twister. However, this is kind of a challenging item. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but it's cute. And then I can kind of already see a theme going on. We have a lot of wood items. So we have wood rings, a wood treasure chest box, a wood block, wood crate, wood tray. Loving it already. Oh, I love this, the little wood shaped house. Oh, this is cool. I haven't used one of these yet. Oh, what's this? A poker set? I've never seen that at Dollar Tree. Pretty cool though. That might be a fun thing to work with. We have a styrofoam cone. Oh my gosh, she sent so many things. Uh, we have a tote bag, a wood shaped oval. Oh, and I love this too. This looks like it's from a plus section. A little uh, palette style sign. All right, so I'm excited about all of that stuff. Definitely can work with some wood projects. And now it's time for the challenge items. This one says challenge item number one. So let's open that first. I love that she wrapped it like a present. It makes it feel more like a good thing than it could be a really crazy bad thing. <laughs> okay, cushy grips. Cushy grips? <laughs> oh my God. I think I saw these hanging up at Dollar Tree and I had to go squish them now that I think about it. But what in the world am I gonna make with them? They're like silicone, but they're colorful and I like that. So that is a challenge. Challenge item number two. I don't know how we're gonna get more challenging than that, but maybe I shouldn't say anything yet. No, you did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, she, <laughs> there's a note on it. Been around a while, you know I sent Courtney, uh, a tr she called it the troll pin. It was a fuzzy pin like this um, and she had to make something out of it and it was just a total fail and flop. If you've heard of the mange tree, 
that's where that comes from. If you're not, you need to go to Courtney's channel and check out some of her Christmas videos. Pretty sure that still tops the uh, challenge <laughs> of the mystery box history. Um, but she has a note on here that says, just kidding, you can make a mage tree on your own time. Your actual challenge item number two are the poker chips. This pin is just for fun. Well, thank you very much. This is an ongoing joke, and even Natalie from Design to the Nines sent me a fuzzy pin as a mystery item one time too, and I have saved that. It sits right in here as a good reminder, and um, I think this will join it, and I'll just start a fuzzy pin collection. So now I get a little bit of time to myself to kind of decide what I'm going to make with all of these things. So the next time you see me, we're gonna get to crafting. All right, so for whatever reason, these cushy grips kind of looked interesting to me so we're gonna start with that the poker chips on the other hand are a whole different story so stay tuned for that challenge item we're gonna tackle this one first all i kept thinking about was caterpillars they were giving me all kinds of caterpillar vibes so i also grabbed out this wooden stake thing that was also in the mystery box we're going to use this for outside so i grabbed my uv resistant clear spray and gave this a good two coats brought it inside and a great tip here is to just set these in a mason jar that way they can dry and you can do the whole thing at once now i'm using a vinyl decal on this but don't feel like you have to completely recreate this the way i am if you don't have a vinyl machine, grab a Sharpie marker, a paint pen, create your own design. I always use my vinyl machine anytime I possibly can. It's just so nice. Have to bring up this too. This is a pretty cool contraption. You probably know them as slap bracelets, but I found them at Hobby Lobby and they are marketing them for holding your vinyl rolls. So if I can find them, I'll link them down in the description box or grab out your old slap bracelets and use them for your vinyl rolls. Pretty cool. So I'm just using my transfer tape here to put the vinyl decal on the front of this now soon to be garden stake. Love this. This is welcome to the garden with a butterfly. And then we're going to add a cute little caterpillar off to the side with the help of these cushy grips. So what worried me the most about these cushy grips was how I was going to attach them. So I grabbed out my gel super glue, put it on the side there put one of the green grippers on the glue and then use some low tack masking tape to hold it on there. And then I let that sit for an hour just to make sure that the glue was good and cured before removing the tape. And then I was really careful about removing the tape as well to make sure that that gripper didn't come off with it. And it actually did really, really good. So happy with the way that turned out. Now we need to give this caterpillar a head. These are wood beads from Dollar Tree. I took apart a wood bead garland and then kept the beads and finally it's coming in handy so it's a little bit hard to see i apologize for the blurriness here but i just drew on some eyeballs and gave them some little white dots for the pupils on this caterpillar's face also gave him a little bit of a smile on there with a sharpie marker giving you all the very hungry caterpillar vibes right so cute i know it's goofy but i think you know, under the circumstances of having to use these cushy grips, it turned out pretty cute. So obviously I still had quite a few of those grippers left over. So let's make a butterfly. So I had some leftover cardstock from Walmart that I ran through my Cricut machine and cut out some really simple silhouette butterflies. Use your scissors and your imagination if you don't have a vinyl machine to cut them out. But I love my vinyl machine because look how perfect these turned out. So I did two of them in pink and orange. And then I got out a piece of scrap paper and we are going to add the little cushies as the bodies of our butterflies. Fly. So once I figured out what combination of colors I wanted, grabbed back out my gel super glue, added a little bit onto their little centerpiece, added the cushies on, got back out my masking tape, held that down, let them sit for an hour, and then came back to remove the tape. Again, be so careful removing the tape as even though it's low tack, it still could pull off some of the top of your cardstock and we don't want that. But that held it in really, really well. We're also going to give these guys some antennas. So these are pipe cleaners, folded them in half, took my pencil, wrapped them around to make some coils. And then once I got them all cute, just tucked the little antennas into the holes that were already in those cushy grips. 
I just took some double-sided tape and added them onto this cute paper flower that I made a few videos back. If you want to see that, I'll link it up in the iCards for you so you can learn how to make paper flowers as well. These look so cute, just displayed on this paper sunflower. It gives you all kinds of summer vibes. I still had a green one left over, so this one is going to get an honored place on my fuzzy pin. I'm going to add this to my collection. It kind of makes for some really great memories. It reminds me of my friends and their good sense of humor. There is still one red cushy grip left. I have no idea what to do with it, so I want you guys' ideas. You are so creative. Let me know your ideas down in the comments below. We're gonna take these three wooden pieces to create a set for a cute coastal vibe tiered tray. So we're gonna work on kind of all this at the same time, but first let's work on this treasure chest. So I have a really cute idea for this, but we need to disassemble this box first. I'm using this really cool tool. It's like a multi-tool. It's a hammer and then you unscrew the handle and you have different sizes of screwdrivers in there. I found it at Hobby Lobby, but if I can find them online, I will link it down in the description box. This is a great crafting tool to have on hand and I used it to get all of the pieces off of this treasure chest and also use some sandpaper to sand down those holes. Now we're gonna take all these pieces outside. I'm using this really pretty kind of sea glass colored spray paint on all of them. So it did take about three coats, making sure to flip these over once they dried so I could get all the sides too. This is what the paint looks like once it's back inside and has dried. I will make sure to link all the products I'm using down in the description box below to make it easy for you to find, especially that spray paint color, which is so pretty. Now we're going to turn this house shape into a beach house. We're gonna use some burlap for that. You can find burlap at Dollar Tree. I had some already open, so I'm using what I have first and just using a combination of some Mod Podge and also some hot glue to hold that burlap down onto the top of this house to give it that cutesy roof vibe. Then we're gonna add a decal onto the front of this. I will also link the uh, designs that I'm using from Cricut Design Space down in the description box below too, so you can find it easy. If you do have a Cricut machine, you wanna recreate this. If you don't, get those white paint pens out and create your own design. Now we're gonna be using some seashells to dress this up a little bit. I am doing a full video coming up very soon on how to use seashells in a ton of different ways, a seashell hacks video. So make sure to subscribe and come back so you don't miss that, that is soon to come. So just glued some of those seashells onto the front of the house and then we're adding some nautical rope also from Dollar Tree onto the top of the roof there just to give it a little bit more detail. So I'm going to show you this all come together soon, but we're going to work on the wood block now and give it a beach look and vibe. So we have obviously painted it blue. Now we're taking some brown and painting one corner and then taking a little bit of white paint in between there to make our shoreline. Then we're going to come in with some white chalk paint, which is a little bit thicker and it's going to cover up a lot more and give you less blending ability, but that's going to give us our wave looks at the front of the beach line. I'm adding a little bit more paint there just to give it some texture and then drying it in between each layer until I was happy with it. And as you can see, now we have a really pretty beach design. Now we can leave this as is, or I found this really cute beach vibes design in Cricut Design Space as well. So I thought it'd be fun to add this onto the front. It says beach vibes. I am so excited to head to the beach this summer. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just adding this decal onto the front of this block. It's going to look cute on our tiered tray. All right, so loving that. Now back to our treasure chest. If you remember, we took this all apart and painted it. That's all we need to do. And we're going to add this to our tray to give us even more tiers or height for our display. So this is a Target Dollar Spot lantern, tiered tray, and white house. The rest is all Dollar Tree. So I added my beach house to the top, our little beach beach vibes block to the treasure chest here. And then this is also from Dollar Tree. It's a really cute sailboat. It says wall hanging, but you could use it in a lot of different ways. We're gonna take it apart, take the staples out of the back. And then there was some glue on our beads here. So I had to get some of that off to slide all the beads down to the bottom. Cause we're gonna use this too as a little tassel and beaded garland for our tray. 
but we're gonna put them on there separately. So our little sailboat here is gonna go on the right side of our tiered tray to take up some of that space. And then we're just gonna tuck our little tassel in and kind of over the treasure chest off to the side. This is also from Dollar Tree, a great bargain. You can make them yourself, but it is cheaper, honestly, to buy them at Dollar Tree already made. And then you can also find this really cool new greenery at Dollar Tree right now too. It has a little seahorse on there. I didn't use that, but I am using the greenery from this stem or this pick. Took it all apart and just used it to tuck into the little spaces around the tray. I love this look so much. We have the coastal beachy vibe in our bedroom. That's how much I love it so much. So I'm so glad that I can pull this into other places in our house now too with summertime already coming very soon and all these little pieces were super easy and quick to make so affordable using dollar tree and target dollar spot items just kind of also tucking in some of those uh starfish that you can also find in dollar tree too right now do you remember me saying that we had to also create a project without adhesive this is my project. We're going to combine the palette sign, the wood rings, and some leather ribbon. Sometimes you can find leather ribbon at Dollar Tree. If not, head to Hobby Lobby. It's $4.99, but if you wait until it's 50% off, it's only $2.50 for this roll of good, thick, heavy-duty faux leather. So we're going to make a little uh, jewelry display with this using the rings and using the leather to help us attach the rings onto the sign. So I cut the leather down to size and then cut it in half so it was smaller, put the rings through it, and we're gonna use these decorative tacks or upholstery tacks, which also are from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, only $2.49, they have different colors, brass, black, or like I'm using the silver here. A tip here is to use some needle nose prop pliers, grab the point end of your tack, and then hammer that down onto the leather. And that's gonna hold our leather in place, hold our ring in place. And then we'll be able to use those rings to display our jewelry. So just went through and kind of offset the rings. So I have three in the center and then two at the top and the bottom so we can hang our jewelry kind of in that tiered look and nothing kind of gets boggled up altogether. But here's what it looks like once I added some of my earrings and my necklaces to the display. Super easy to pop them on, pop them off. And it looks like a really cute display too once it's hung on your wall. Now for these poker chips that I was so excited about and then quickly changed my mind as I was working on this project. We're combining it with the oval wood sign from Dollar Tree. This is my inspiration. I found this on Pinterest. It's kind of a seashell chandelier without a light in it. So I got going with this. This was kind of a long project, I'm not gonna lie. I laid out all of my chips to have the number of chips that I would need to create this chandelier. I started by using a drill to drill holes into these, but I quickly found out it was a lot easier to use this. It's called an owl or an awl. I will link it down in the description box below for you. It's a handy tool to have in your craft stash, but it was easy to just take this puncture a hole into it, kind of push it up onto the owl a little bit more um, to make the hole bigger. And this gave me much nicer holes. The drill just kind of ate through the plastic and made it look a little bit more messy. This was just as easy. And honestly, if you don't have a drill, this is the best way to go anyway. You can see on the left is the drill versus the right with the nicer holes with the owl. So here's where things got interesting. It was a long process getting all those holes in there. But spray painting, I never thought would be this difficult. They just went kind of flying everywhere. And eventually I came outside and they were all over the ground. So I was frustrated with it. But these really needed a base coat of spray paint. So that way I could add another pretty layer over that, which I'll show you in a minute. First, also with the white spray paint coming in, covering that white oval wood piece too. Here are the pieces after I picked them all up off the ground. They got two coats of white spray paint on both sides of these chips. So it took a little bit to dry and wasn't the warmest day, but we got through it. We have white chips now, and this is really cool paint that I found on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's like a two-toned acrylic paint, and it really is going to give the vibe of those kind of seashell opal style uh, 
chips that we need to create the chandelier. I'm using a really soft, fluffy brush to apply this paint, making sure to get, of course, the whole front, but don't forget the sides of your chips too. And we're gonna do that for all of these, let it dry, come back, flip it over, add another coat. They really only needed one coat of paint, luckily, on each side. So these turned out really, really pretty. They have like that sheen and double colors to them. So I was really happy with the paint. Now to put this whole thing together, I'm coming in with my drill and we are drilling a hole, one on each side, one on the top and the bottom, and then came in equally distance between each one of those holes um, around the edge there. So we ended up with eight holes total, which means you're gonna need eight strings of these chips all put together. And I'm using some regular white thread to put these together. If you have thinner fishing string, I would suggest that, especially if you're gonna put this outside. Uh, if you're gonna be using thread, I would not put this outside at all. It's not gonna last very long because it's pretty thin and it probably will dry rot. But we'll keep this inside for me um, since I didn't have any fishing string and I'm just using that thread to go through the holes of the chips and making varying heights and varying lengths of these chips put together. So I had a combination of sets of four, sets of five, and sets of six. <laughs> So here's what one strand will look like. And I also wanna mention that you don't need holes in the bottom one, cause obviously it's the last one on the string. To put these onto the wood to make that chandelier, we're gonna use some embroidery floss. It's thicker and it's going to stay on the wood a little bit better when we go to create a knot. So I went from the top of the wood, through the bottom, through the top hole of a chip, back up through the wood and then tied several knots until it was thick enough that it wouldn't fall back down through the hole. And to kind of add a little bit more structure to this, I also added some hot glue into the hole, pulled the knot down into the hole. And then you'll wanna cut off the excess tail and string that's left behind. And then you're gonna repeat this and go all the way around your circles. So you have eight strands total. So the magic of YouTube, here is it all strung up and finished, except how in the world are we going to hang that? Well, now that is the part that we're gonna get to. So I'm gonna be using some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I took this length, folded it in half, and then cut that length in half to give me two equal size pieces. Now we're gonna take one of those pieces, put the tails together, find the center, and then find the center of our wood board. And we are gonna staple that down onto the top there. This is a really cool tool. Also have to have in your craft stash, it's an electric stapler. So you don't have to strain your hands to use like a regular staple gun. And it's battery powered and rechargeable. So it is just an amazing tool to have handy. It doesn't kick, it doesn't make a loud noise. It's just really nice to have. I will link it down below as well. So once I got all those pieces on the top stapled down, we're gonna grab all the tails together, wrap some jute around the top, tie a knot, and that's gonna keep the top all together for us so we can now hang up our little I don't know, I'm calling it a seashell chandelier. I wish I had a better place to hang this to display, but this does a pretty good job. So you can at least see it hanging outside in the sunshine to see the colors of the shells, faux shells, I should say, uh, kind of bouncing off the light. It does look really pretty. I will say you can definitely tell that there are numbers on the poker chips if you get close enough, but if you pull back, you can't see the numbers at all. It still gives you a really pretty summery coastal vibe. Love it. It was a lot of work, but it turned out really pretty in the end. Let's do another quick outdoor DIY with this crate that was in the mystery box. We're gonna take the sticker off the bottom and we're gonna be using some of these tumbling tower blocks, wood pieces to create some feet. You're gonna need eight of those total. But I'm gonna use this outdoors for live plants. So I'm using a drill and a small drill bit here just to drill in several holes in the bottom for drainage once we get our plant in there. 
Then we need to start making our feet. So we're gonna use a combination of some wood glue on one of the short sides of our tumbling tower block piece. And we're gonna combine that with some hot glue as well to help tack this down until our wood glue dries. Now take your second piece of tumbling tower block and put it along the wider side of the block to create an L shape that is going to be our one of the four legs on our planter. Come back in with some more wood glue and some more hot glue and we're going to put that right onto the corner of this box. So of course this is just one of the four legs that we're going to need so we're going to repeat this process three more times adding those little feet onto the corners using the hot glue and the wood glue. Go ahead and let that sit for about an hour or so so all your wood glue can dry and cure and become strong for us to use. So here's what it's looking like from the different angles and we're also going to take this outside and we are going to spray this again with our UV resistant clear acrylic spray. I love this stuff for anything we're using outdoors. It's going to protect the wood. It's going to protect it from the sun and the water and all that kind of stuff. This is what it looks like once I put a little succulent in there. Even the gnome there is from Dollar Tree. I spray painted him several years ago and he has just continued to live in my little garden. I must really love him because he has been around a long time. And I did get to every item in the mystery box, unfortunately, but I did want to go ahead and hang up this rainbow wind twirly thing that Courtney included. Thank you so much, Courtney. I hung it in the tree outside our bedroom window, so it just puts a smile on my face every morning. Now head on over to Jennifer at a little bit of Common Crazy to see what I sent her in her mystery box. And if you're new, please subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. That helps out the Daily DIYer channel so, so much. I want to thank you all so, so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.